Hello, I'm Scott Stevens, Goldsboro City Manager. It has been a pleasure for me getting to know the community, business leaders, Seymour Johnson Air Force Base, and our employees over the past year. I want to thank the Mayor and Council for allowing me to serve the community as your City Manager. I would also like to thank our employees for choosing to work for the City of Goldsboro. They're a great group of people committed and dedicated to serving our community. Before I get too far in sharing what I consider some of the highlights of the past year, I would like to share a little bit about myself. For those that don't know me, I grew up in Cary, but my grandmother lived in Beaufort. So I've spent my entire life traveling through Goldsboro and knew a lot about Goldsboro along US 70. I went to college at NC State University, graduated in civil engineering, and went to work for our State Department of Transportation in Raleigh. After a few years in Raleigh, I transferred to Kinston with the Department of Transportation. In 1998, I went to work for the City of Kinston as their city engineer, became their public services director, and for the past four, well, past four and a half years from August of 2011 backwards, served as Kinston City Manager. I was a reserve naval officer for eight years, and after I resigned my commission, I completed a master's degree in public administration at East Carolina University. I'm married to Robin Souza, who grew up in Nahana, so we spent a lot of time here over the past 20 years with parades and summer times and other events, eating and shopping in the Goldsboro community. We have two sons, Jonathan, who's 14, and Daniel, who's 11. Uh, we've adjusted very well to Goldsboro and have purchased a home over behind the Outback area. When I'm not at work, I enjoy time with my boys. If it has a ball or something to hit, we probably do it, although not always well. We take a lot of short trips, and enjoy the beach, being outdoors, and boating. We've been active members in the United Methodist Church our whole lives and have been attending St. Luke United Methodist Church here in Goldsboro. With that said, I'd like to move on to the year in review, or at least what I've seen and some of the highlights over the past year. Most recently, we've had a, a lot of homicides in Goldsboro, and I think I'll start there to at least assure you that our police department and chief, mayor and council, are working hard to address this issue. In the short term, um, and that is, what are we doing today in response to these violent activities? We are investigating these crimes and making arrests. And I would say that's our first and foremost, that once a violent act has occurred, is making sure that we are capturing or arresting those that have created that for our community. We're also deploying a mobile command center where we're moving them throughout the community and we have officers working in and out of that command center. Our chief has moved to a more community-oriented policing model uh, whereby we're keeping our officers in the same zones longer, encouraging them to get out and speak with citizens, uh, and that seems to be having a positive effect in terms of the community getting to know us and also with information they're sharing with us. Uh, we continue to, to, with community meetings and involvement with community groups that are concerned and would continue to ask for your help in reporting things that don't look right or rumors that you're hearing through the community to our police department. That will help us in the short term. But how do we stop the violence in the long term? And that is a challenge in a country we live in with the rights we all have of stopping the violence. Uh, we do recognize in Goldsboro that the, the people that are committing violence are a limited group of our population. And we know most of them. They have a history in the court system. The city council has funded an additional position within our police department to bring our law enforcement efforts along with the court system, along with the community, up together to bring us face to face with these known offenders, to help them one last time to make a choice. Don't break the law or face serious penalties in jail time if you break the law again. This has worked in other communities, has had um, astounding success in reducing the violent crime rate, and I think you'll see more of that coming from us in the next three to six to 12 months. Again, that's a longer term approach to reduction in crime, but I think we are excited that it will have an impact here as well. Moving on to other things. I had heard a lot of good things about Goldsboro, its employees, and the community before coming to work here. And I'd like to tell you what I heard and what I've experienced this past year has held true to what I heard before I arrived. We have committed intelligent employees working to make this a great place to live and work. I like the banner on the city's websites that reads, we value integrity, professionalism, collaboration, and promoting quality of life. I believe all of our customers are in the customer service business, and I expect them to be friendly, professional, and efficient at their jobs. And I think most of us are. 
As I consider what I might share with you, I spent a fair amount of time thinking about the past year and what we've done. When I arrived in August of 2011, Hurricane Irene changed the work priorities and was not far behind my arrival. It was a great opportunity for me to see our employees working in, a, in action during a stressful event. I was immediately impressed, and getting to know them has been a top priority for me. I have also worked hard to get to know the community. I have attended many events sponsored by our Chamber of Commerce and Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. I have spoken to numerous civic clubs, community groups, uh, and almost anyone that asked me to come. We have a lot of ideas and passionate people in the community, and I appreciate hearing from all of them. I have been extremely impressed in the relationship between the city, county, Chamber of Commerce, and again, Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. I knew we worked together well, but I have really enjoyed building these relationships and am very appreciative of the positive involvement that Seymour Johnson Air Force Base personnel choose to make in our community. They are much more involved than they have to be, and that is very, very much appreciated and shows throughout the community. I believe in sharing information with people, our employees and citizens, and encourage you to ask questions when you have them. If you want to know why the city is doing something, ask us. You may not always agree with why we're doing it, but I would at least like you to understand why we felt it was the right decision to recommend to our city council or why our mayor and city council felt it was the right decision for the community. Our website has a lot of current information with the citizen request tab uh, in the top left corner of our website that will email anything you send to my office or feel free to call my office at 580-4330. You can also follow the city on Facebook and Twitter if you like those applications and we're working on some more ways for you to keep up or report or share things that you see in and around the community. In addition, we have partnered with Wayne County to host this news show uh, throughout the day so that you can see current updates of what is going on. I would like to share a few of the projects that have been active over the past year. Some of these are maintenance items, but many of them represent an investment in Goldsboro's future. Many of these projects use city funds to leverage county, state, or federal funds. We believe these projects are good for Goldsboro. The first one is our streetscape project. We are finishing the first block in front of City Hall from Ash Street to Mulberry uh, at a cost of around $2 million. Again, it should be open in early November and we're excited to see it coming together. The City Council will discuss the next blocks over the coming months on whether or not to proceed. Our hope in doing this is that we will reinvigorate downtown. It has worked in other communities, we believe it will work here, and the civic clubs and members of them that I've spoken with believe we need to do something for downtown. They're just not sure what. Uh, whether they like streetscape or not, they do believe downtown's important. We've also had a group of committed citizens working on an Air Force Museum. Uh, at the corner of Ash and Spence. We have hired a consultant to study the cost to renovate, purchase exhibits, and operate an Air Force Museum. This study should be completed and we'll start getting preliminary results in October and a final reporting in November, and the City Council will have to decide at that time how to move forward. Is it the right time to make the investment that will be required, or is this a project that we should do at some point in the future and with other partners? Union Station has been a part of our history for a long time. In its current state, we have worked with the Department of Transportation to preserve the structure so that it doesn't deteriorate any further. It is currently owned by the City of Goldsboro. We have sought grant funds over the years and will continue to seek grant, grant funding for its renovation, but it is a project that today is not first in line for funding, but one that continues to be important to us and the future rail service that we've talked about coming back to Goldsboro. I believe this project's a good project, it's just when is the right time to move forward and the availability of outside funding will help uh, move it uh, further up on our list of things to build. Our gateway transfer station. The city and county will consider funding the construction of this facility at some point adjacent to Union Station. State and federal grants are available to pay up for 90% of the construction costs. So while I don't want to make light of that because grant money is still tax dollar money in most cases, I think for our community the transfer center we have today is in dire need of a, of a new facility. It is not adequate to serve, serve the needs of our community. 
we are working again along with the county in, to try to build a new transfer station at a cost of around four to five million dollars. So it's a significant investment with 90% of that cost paid by the state and federal government, the other 10% to be paid locally by the city and or county. So that's a project I think you'll hear more about in the near term as opposed to long term. City Council has also allocated and agreed to install sidewalk along Wayne Memorial Drive or Wayne Memorial Boulevard from Goldsboro High School uh, to US 70. State funding is available to pay, to set, to pay up to 70% of the construction cost to install the sidewalks at this location. So again, we're using city funds uh, leveraged with state funds. So that will install sidewalk again from Goldsboro High along Herman, Wayne Memorial out to US 70. We've also talked about the Berkeley Boulevard widening project from Royal Avenue to New Hope Road for a number of years. The city entered into agreement where we would purchase the right-of-way for this project and we have purchased some of it and the state funding would be available for construction. We had hoped to have this project going to construction in August of 2012. We have not quite finished our right-of-way acquisition and we hope that in early 2013 that part will be done and that our State Department of Transportation can begin widening Berkeley uh, to four lanes from Royal Avenue all the way up to New Hope Road. The city traffic signalization project was completed over this past year. Our, all traffic signals are now monitored and maintained by the city of Goldsboro that are in and around the Goldsboro area. This project costs just over $4.6 million with the state paying 84% of the construction costs. So again, we're leveraging city money with state funds to serve our community. The state will also provide annual funding for the signal system maintenance and some of our staff time, particularly or primarily our traffic engineer, to make sure the system is running correctly. Uh, the hardware side of this project is complete. The software timing to help the signals work and move traffic in progression is being uh, implemented and refined and you should continue to see improvements in traffic movement along corridors such as Wayne Memorial. Uh, Ash Boulevard, Berkeley Boulevard, Spence Avenue, etc. We had a lot of talk of annexation over the past year. Um, as most of the community is aware, a local bill was passed by our state legislature this past year that removed an area that was lawfully annexed into the city, the Falling Brook area, and removed it from the city limits. With changes in the state law, future involuntary annexations are not likely to happen. The removal of the Fallingbrook area also freed up over $6 million in sewer bond money that had been set aside to provide sewer service to the Fallingbrook community. We still have many needs within our sewer system in terms of aging manholes and pipes and pumps. And we are working uh, to redirect that $6 million in bond funds towards projects that will be maintenance activities as opposed to expansion of our sewer system. You will see that work over the coming years. A service change that many in the community have seen is related to recycling. The city did go from a sorted cycle where the residents were asked to sort into bins in their garbage container to a commingled curbside recycling. This was done for a number of reasons. Primarily, cost drove it. We can do it with less staffing so that saves the city and you as the residents paying those cost money. But it also made for an easier method with the hopes of increasing our recycling volumes and safer working conditions for our employees because they don't have to walk around that trailer and, and put things in different compartments. It is a much quicker action for them at the road and curb and we believe it's safer, more efficient and better service to our citizens. Our sanitation employees are commended for making this a fairly smooth transition for our citizens. Behind the scenes, uh, the city is producing the water that you drink on a daily basis from the Noose River, treating it, cleaning it. We've invested over two and a half million dollars to in plant upgrades at our water treatment plant to ensure that we have a high quality, safe, reliable water supply for the foreseeable future. That project is coming to an end, but it's been an active project over these past 12 months. We also completed a park maintenance building. We had a very small building behind our Herman Park Center on Ash Street. We constructed a new maintenance building over our Peacock Park and have moved our maintenance operations there where our staff is excited to have space to actually pull equipment in and do the required maintenance inside as well as storage and other areas within this building to better serve our park side of our community. 
Street resurfacing is always an area of concern. There are many streets within the city that are maintained by our State Department of Transportation, but there are also quite a few that are maintained by the city of Goldsboro. We need approximately half a million dollars a year um, to keep our streets in adequate condition. Uh, we're behind in terms of maintenance on our streets. City Council did allocate $900,000 this year to be sp spent for street resurfacing, and the community should start seeing that work sometime in the spring of 2013 with the goal of completing that work um, towards the end of June of 2013. Stony Creek Park, the city did apply for and receive a PARTEF grant some years ago. It's a 50-50 match, so again, leveraging our money. But the shelters, bathrooms, and some more entrance improvements should begin over the next um, two months with the hope of completing those by the end of December or early January timeframe. Our WA Foster Community Center has served the community for a very long time. The existing facility is really inadequate in terms of spacing uh, for our needs for play within a gymnasium and in need of significant repair. We are looking for a site to build a new WA Foster and we'll, with our hope of moving forward once the site is identified and the amenities laid out of being able to go to construction with that project again in early 2013 which should be completed in the fall of 2013. A pretty aggressive schedule but again to close one facility to build a new facility and improve our parks offerings I think is very important. Capital items within our budget this year we continue to have need for vehicles and building maintenance. We never have funded what the departments have felt like they've needed over the year and this year was no different. But this year we do have over $900,000 uh, for vehicle replacement, which is significant, from garbage trucks to police cars uh, to other vehicles and equipment throughout the city. In addition, we have approximately $2.4 million in our budget for building or other maintenance needs, a lot of those in our water and sewer systems, and they'll be ongoing annual needs for maintenance. I would like to tell you the city of Goldsboro is financially stable. We have an annual budget of over $50 million but we have to make choices like everyone else and balance our priorities on how we spend the community's money. And we do recognize that it's your money and we are trying to spend it to the best benefit of all of us here. We work to balance all the needs and wants with the available funding and we're using the resources we have in the best way possible. We are currently working with 40 fewer positions than we had three years ago. We have not had to lay off employees or had to ask employees to take time off or furloughs as many communities have had to do and I do want to thank our employees for stepping up and I hope you haven't seen that reduction in staff, that our service level we have tried to maintain at the same level, but again working with approximately 40 fewer positions or almost 10 percent of our workforce and still we believe meeting the needs of the community in an adequate manner. I do share with our employees that perceptions matter and as city employees we have to be aware of what we're doing looks like to others that observe our actions. As we all know people are always watching and forming opinions and I hope that we are giving you a good opinion of city employees and what we're doing with the funds you send to us. I will tell you as I ride throughout town and see employees working, if something looks odd to me, I will call their department head to ask them why we're doing this or that or why are we waiting here or there. What I find most of the time is there is a valid reason. A piece of equipment is broken down, we're responding to a silent alarm. Uh, there are reasons for what we're doing most of the time. Occasionally there's th things that we need to correct, but most of the time our employees are doing what they need to be doing to do their job to serve the community. But if something doesn't look right to you, please don't hesitate to call me or email me what you've seen and let me know and I will look into it and respond to you and tell you what was going on at that time and why it was either okay or why it wasn't and to assure you that we've taken action to correct that. We ought to be doing reasonable things and as long as we're doing them in in accordance with providing service to the community and can defend why we're doing that, I think our employees um, are living up to what I expect of them. In closing, I would like to tell you that I have enjoyed my first year in Goldsboro. My family has, has adjusted very well, the community has been extremely welcoming, and many of you have been a big part of that. I ask all of us, employees, myself, and almost any group I speak to, to look for the good in our community. What you say about Goldsboro matters. And while we have some problems, as most, community do, most communities do, we have a lot of good things that make this a great place to live and work. So please do your part to speak well of it. You never know who's listening and you never know what impact you'll have on that person. Again, if you have questions about what they're doing or ideas or things we should consider or things you'd want to know, 
can use the citizen request tab on our website anytime. Um, top left corner, black tab there says citizen request. That will email into my office. Or you can always call, speak with someone, or leave a voicemail in my office at 580-4330. Again, that number, 580-4330. Again, thank you for allowing me to serve. We are here to serve you. And call if we can help. Thanks.